So the last integrated development environment, the last IDE you need to know about is Dreamweaver. And I'm telling you about the IDEs which have historical significance or which have present day significance, as in you should use them. And uh, Dreamweaver has huge historical significance. So it was originally created by a company called Macromedia way back in the 90s. And it was the go tool, go to tool for building websites. It was the industry standard, the industry leader. It was the best. And then Macromedia, the company Macromedia, which created Dreamweaver, got acquired by Adobe. And even in the early 2000s, Dreamweaver was the go-to tool. But today, uh, Dreamweaver, not so much, right? Like, uh, it's not recommended to use Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver is kind of like, <laughs> it's, this is an analogy, Dreamweaver is like crack cocaine. It's going to make you feel really good, but then once you're hooked, it's going to suck all the money out of you, and it's going to make you weak and febile and ignorant, and you won't be a strong coder. <laughs> so that's a little bit of an exaggeration. And a Dreamweaver is very appealing. It's very appealing. It has a strong message. And the message is right here. Make amazing websites that look great on any screen, no matter what your skill level is, without writing any code. So it's a wissy-wiggy. I'm saying wissy-wiggy. Wissy-wiggy is this. W wissy. What you see is what you get. That's a wissy-wiggy. Right, WYSIWYGI HTML editor. What you see is what you get. And so you just drag and drop things on the screen and move them around, and it writes the code for you, which is really appealing. I just want to make it easy, make it look beautiful. But ultimately, WYSIWYGIs, and so there's like other WYSIWYGIs out there like Wix.com, like create an amazing website yourself, just drag and drop and move things around. That's really appealing. And for many people, that's the right solution. But if you want to learn how to build websites, if you want to be a strong website builder, you have to build your foundation on knowing HTML and CSS. And without having to write code, if you don't write code, you're not going to learn that. And so once you learn code, maybe coming back to Dreamweaver to mock things up is fine. Dreamweaver will not write code as well, as lean, or as clean as a person who's writing it by hand. And so that's just the nature of the beast. Nor will Wix, right? And you'll hit walls really quickly with wissy wiggies. So anyhow, that's a history of Dreamweaver. It's very appealing to just like be able to drag and drop and resize things and have the code written for you. It's nice to go in and look at the code and see what kind of code got written. And that can give you ideas about how to write your code. But ultimately, it is best, my opinion, my belief, to learn the fundamentals to actually know how to code. That's what this web that's what this course is about. To know how to write the code to build websites. And so Dreamweaver will allow you to write code, but it also allows you just to drag and drop and, and it writes the code for you. So anyhow, that's Dreamweaver, and that's the strongest argument against it is that it uh, it writes the code for you. That can also be a little bit helpful because you could see what kind of code it wrote, but it could also be a big crutch because then you're not learning yourself how to actually write the code. Another argument against Dreamweaver is that it costs 50 bucks a month. Unless you're a student or a teacher, then it's 20 bucks a month, which isn't that bad. And uh, But when you compare it to WebStorm is basically, you know, 20, 30 bucks a year. Uh, that's a big difference. And, uh, and then the last thing you should know is I just want you to be aware of Dreamweaver because it has a really huge historical significance in the past with web development. It used to be the go-to tool, so uh, you should just be aware of that. And when you hear people say, hey, have you heard of Dreamweaver? Have you tried Dreamweaver? You understand my perspective. I've been in this game since the 90s. You understand my perspective that, yeah, I've heard of Dreamweaver you know, and people used to use it back in the day, back in the 90s, back in 2000, but not so much today if you really want to learn how to write code because it doesn't require you to write code. It'll write the code for you. So I use Atom or WebStorm. That could be your response when people say, hey, have you heard of Dreamweaver? And if you didn't have videos like this, you might start learning a bunch of stuff and then be like, hey, Dreamweaver, maybe I need to learn that. And then you're confused, <laughs> right? So part of my job as your instructor is to guide you down what I think is the best path 
for you to learn how to build websites from the ground up, to hand code them, to create them yourselves, to understand the code, the HTML and the CSS, uh, that's the path I'm going to be showing you. And for that reason, I strongly recommend you do not, at this point in your learning curve, use Dreamweaver. Later down the road, if you want to play around with Dreamweaver when you know, you know code and you can look at Dreamweaver's code and evaluate it, totally fine. Right now, stay away from it. <laughs>